Hello and welcome to the Google Cloud Advanced Network Security Demo Series. Today we're going to talk about the Cloud NG Firewall Enterprise. My name is Tracy Jian. I'm the Product Manager. I'm here with Nicholas Bedard, Customer Engineer in Google Cloud. We have heard from many of our customers about the importance of network threat detection in their cloud environment as a must-have for protecting their workload. Through the discussion, it was clear that they have three areas of needs when it comes to network threat detection. The first was the need for complete visibility and control as they transition from primarily a perimeter-based inspection to inspecting traffic within their cloud environment and between different types of workloads. It is also important to be able to prevent threat even if the traffic is encrypted. Second, they asked us for a solution that was easy to deploy and manage. It was clear they didn't want to roll their own solutions, manage and scale fleets of virtual machines, and having to deal with bringing their own open source rules. They want a fully managed solution. At the same time, they are looking for a product that scales with their cloud workloads and that they can deploy with minimal impact to their network architecture. And finally, they are not willing to compromise on security efficacy. With the increasing sophistication of threats and the massive volume of new malware variants being introduced every day, they absolutely need a system that provides amazing production-proven detection capabilities with low noise, and that is backed by world-class threat research. Today, we are introducing the Google Cloud NG Firewall Enterprise with intrusion prevention. Cloud NG Firewall Enterprise is a cloud-native product that is easy and fast to deploy. It provides you with scalability and performance, as well as availability and reliability. Our intrusion prevention capabilities are built on top of our existing, stateful, and distributed cloud-native firewall fabric, which enables users to leverage the hierarchical firewall policy and IEM government tax, providing them with a flexible IPS inversion with no need for any network architecture change. We're using a new technology called Packet Intercept that is part of Google's software-defined networking to redirect traffic flows to Google-managed firewall endpoints that are located in the same row. This helps bring detections as close to the workload as possible, providing more south east-west visibility and control down to VM interface level. We have partnered with Palo Alto Networks to integrate their threat prevention system and make sure we're not compromising on security efficacy and protect you against all types of threats from day one. The product was built in with TOS inspection capability to ensure that no threats goes undetected. It also provides you with a threat alert on the cloud console as well as through the cloud log. With this, I'll pass it on to Nicholas to walk us through more information about the underlying architecture and the live demo. Thanks, Tracy. To configure Cloud NGFW with IPS, you will need to follow these steps. First, we need to enable one firewall endpoint and attach it to your VPC. The firewall endpoint is a Google managed Palo Alto network VM that provide firewall and intrusion prevention services. Second, create a threat prevention security profile. This is where you will specify the action to take on traffic that matches specific threat signatures or severity level. You can allow, deny, or alert on traffic. Third, create a security profile group. This is a collection of security profiles that can be applied to any firewall policy. And in step four, you enable IPS in the firewall policies. Step five, you are viewing the threat logs in the Cloud NGFW dashboard, the threat menus, or directly into Cloud level. Step one, two, and three must be done at the organization level, where step four can be done at both the organization level or directly at the project. And finally, you can send all of the threat logs to your security operation tool using a log sync and pub sub, or even use the Chronicle native integration directly in your console. I would also like to bring to your attention that enabling CloudNGFW IPS functionality 
will not require any architecture change. So no special routing or load balancing change to your existing topology. Google take care of this in the back. All you need to do is to turn it on. So let's get into my demo lab. It's built over three main components. One, a Google Cloud project with two virtual machines, a web server VM and a compromised VM. One cloud firewall endpoint with IPS configuration and security operation tool, including Chronicle, SIM, and so on. The web server is accessible internally and from the internet using an application load balancer and CloudNet. The compromised VM will attack the web server from both the internet and from the internal network. This will demonstrate Cloud NGFW capability to protect against north-south and east-west traffic. The firewall policies will capture VM traffic and send it to the firewall endpoint for threat inspection. The firewall endpoint will apply the security profile action and signature override, and then send the payload back to the destination, alert or block the traffic. It will also send all of the threat logs to cloud login, where a logging sync will forward them to a PubSub in order to push it to external security tools. For Chronicle, it's even faster, as firewall logs are exported automatically at the organization level using a one-time process code option in Chronicle page directly in the console. This will allow my security operation team to collect and analyze the threat logs in order to detect and respond quickly to an incident. You can send all these logs to BigQuery to create an analytic dashboard using the looker blocks published on the marketplace. In this demonstration, I will first create security profile in alert mode only. I will also show you how to override the action for a specific signature. Then I will change the security profile from alert mode to block mode in order to demonstrate how Cloud NGFW Enterprise can now block threats. So let's go into my console and see how we can achieve this configuration. I am now in my console. And the first thing we can notice is the Cloud NGFW dashboard. The new dashboard will provide super useful information on your Cloud NGFW status and configuration. It will provide firewall policy status like total number of network covered and the numbers of policies. It will also show you some threat metrics it was able to capture. The total number of, if, of endpoint association and some firewall insights like shadowed rules, the night rules hits, and overly permissive rules. The dashboard is very good starting point to give you an overview of your overall network security posture. In order to use Cloud NGFW, we first need to configure a security profiles. In my lab, I already configured two security profiles, one for alert and one for block. My alert security profile is configured as follow. All severity overrides are set to alert. So regardless of their severity level, they will only do alerts. But I also configured signatures override for specific log4j attacks. The number you see are the threat ID number from Palo Alto Network Threat Vault database because this is the engine that is being used in Cloud NGFW Enterprise. If we take a quick look at the other security profile I created, you will notice that all severity overrides are set to deny and that there is no signature override. And this is exactly the behavior that we want as we want to drop everything. Once the security profile are created, I now need to configure security profile group. Security profile groups will be used in the network policies and are attached to the desired security profile. This will enable you to change the behavior of Cloud NGFW without even touching any firewall policies. In my lab, this means I can switch between my alert and my block security profile very easily 
by simply changing the profile associated to the profile group. Now that my security profile and profile groups are created, let's go in the firewall policy menu. At this point, we changed from the org level and we are now directly in the project level. We can see that there is no legacy VPC firewall rule in my lab and I only have one network firewall policy, so let's explore that. I have many rules to support my lab, but only two are interesting at this point. It's rule 800 and 900. Deals rules are inspecting traffic coming from the inside and coming from the outside. So let's see what is so important about this rule. If we edit this rule, you will notice that the action is set to proceed to L7 inspection. So instead of the traditional allow, deny, or go next, Cloud NGFW Enterprise now have a new action called Proceed to L7 Inspection. And once selected, you can assign this inspection to the security profile group that you previously configured. The rest of the configuration is using tag, specifying source and destination IP address, just like any firewall rule. If we take a look at rule 900, we will see that we are also using L7 inspection, but this time applied to traffic coming from the outside using my CloudNet external address. So I generated threads between my two VMs using the alert only security profile. And if I go in the threat menu, I will be able to see all the threats that were inspected by my Cloud NGFW Enterprise. I will see the alert severity, timestamp, and threat types, as well as other useful information. Notice the action on the far right. Log4j attacks are being dropped, and all of the other types of attack are in alert. This is exactly the behavior I should be expecting from my alert security profile. Now let's change the security profile groups to block and see how we can now block everything without changing the security policy. So I will go back to the security profile at the org level, click security profile group, and then select my security profile. Click edit and change the threat prevention profile from alert to block and then save. Now I just need to go back at the project level and click on the threat menu. In the background, I will re-execute the attacks between my two machines. But now, since I changed the security profile to block, the result will be different. So let's refresh the log page and slide all the way to the far end. And just as expected, all the threats were now blocked using the new security profile. In this lab, we implemented Cloud NGFW Enterprise and we're able to change the behavior of the protection just by changing security profile configuration without any architecture change or fire, firewall policy change. To learn more about Cloud NGFW Enterprise, please check out the documentation links in the description. And thank you for watching. <laughs>